Look, Mahati, X marks the spot. This must be where the treasure is. Yes! Yeah, yeah! Start digging, Mahati! <gasps> a treasure chest! Ah, goody, goody! I can't wait to see our treasure! <gasps> Whoa! Look, Mahati, we're rich! I've never seen so much treasure in my life! Oh! Look at this! So much treasure! Oh! Wait! What are we going to do with it? What? Well, what are we going to do with all our treasure? Ah, uh, buy a pirate ship. We've already got one. Go on holiday. We're pirates. We go on holidays all the time and travel the world every day. Buy some nice clothes. Go to an expensive restaurant. Yeah, but you don't even wear clothes and we don't need this much treasure to go to an expensive restaurant. Well, I don't know. I need to give it away, Marty. Hey, you're right. Yeah, yeah. In instead of buying us a new pirate ship, we can buy people a new home. And and instead of buying in instead of buying expensive clothes, we can we can give people clothes who don't have any. And instead of going to a nice restaurant, we can we can buy food for people who don't have any food. And and instead of going on a holiday, we can give people an education. Whoa! Hey, Katie, I thought we were playing pirates, not saints. Yeah, I know, but I, I just got reminded of my friend and I couldn't help it. Which friend? Come see. Come and play, play with Katie and Coco. That's the way. Get ready, let's go. Flying through the air with Coco. Telling stories with Katie. Doing that together. Meeting my friend. Friends that help us every day. So, what friend? St. Catherine Drexel. She grew up in a very rich family in America and was given lots of money when she was old enough. But instead of using it all for herself, she used her wealth to help other people. Ah, now I see why you were reminded of her before. She definitely sounds like she used that treasure well. She certainly did. It was her dad who taught her to be so generous. Really? Did she help other people with his money too? Yep. He gave money to many different charities. He and his wife would invite poor people into their house to give them food and clothing. <laughs> then go themselves to visit other people who felt too proud or embarrassed to come to their house for aid. What a nice family! Did Catherine's dad help her as well? Of course he did. He was able to help so many people because he was so wealthy from his work. But he knew that as a father, his first responsibility was to provide for his three daughters. He made sure they received the best education he could give them. He took them travelling around America and Europe to show them the world. But most important of all, he taught them to pray and to love God. That explains why and Catherine were so generous then, because they love God. Exactly, Coco. When we love God, it makes us want to love other people by helping them in any way we can, even in small things. Coco, what are some small things the kids could do to show how they love God by helping other people? Hmm, maybe help to put away some toys, even they didn't play with them. Good idea. What do you think, kids? Oh. If your friend or brother and sister gets hurt, you can try to help them out. Go in and find an adult and then help to cheer them up afterwards. You're on a roll, Coco. There are all kinds of things we can do, isn't there? You could even ask your parents to help you find some toys or clothes you don't need anymore and donate them to a charity. Yeah, so then some kids who can't afford as many toys or clothes that have them. But Katie, what did Catherine do to help other people and who did she help them? Well, Catherine lived in the United States roughly a hundred years ago. 
But back then, there were some groups of people, especially the indigenous American people and the African American peoples, who didn't have the same opportunities that most European people had, like Catherine. They were often very poor, they were treated badly, they were just received very little or even no education, and they were mostly left as outcasts of society. Catherine desperately wanted to help them, but at first she didn't know exactly how to do that. But she had so much money, didn't she? She did, Coco, especially when her father died and she inherited a portion of his wealth. But even with lots of money, it can be hard to make a difference if there aren't many other people who want to help as well. There weren't many missions or charity organisations to help the Indigenous Americans and the Afrinic Americans. So she didn't know who to give the money to. So what did she do then? It was the Pope who eventually gave her the idea. One year, she travelled to Rome with her three sisters. And while they were there, they visited Pope Lee the 13th. Holy Father, the Indigenous Americans are so unloved. Please send missionaries to help them. Why not, my child, yourself become a missionary? Catherine became a missionary? Wow, not pressure, right? Wait, Katie, what's a missionary again? A missionary is someone who travels to faraway lands to teach them about Jesus and welcome them into God's family. A missionary also cares for people they reach out to as best they can, caring for the sick, giving them an education and helping to spread peace. So did Catherine become a missionary like the Pope suggested then? Yes, she did. But she was a bit shocked by the idea at first. She had thought about becoming a religious sister before, but she had imagined that she would enjoy a convent where she would spend most of her time in prayer. The idea of becoming a nun who went out into the world and cared for people every day frightened her a bit. But after thinking and praying about it, she decided that the Pope's suggestion was what God was calling her to do in her life. Wow, Catherine was very brave. What did she do with all her money then? When she entered religious life, she gave up ownership of all her wealth, and it was used instead to support her new missionary work of helping the indigenous and the African Americans. She soon established a new religious congregation called the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, who devoted their entire lives to this mission. She opened three new schools for the children to receive an education, as well as the first Catholic university for African Americans. Were there no schools before that, Katie? Well, there were schools, but many people back then thought that Indigenous and African Americans were less important, so they weren't allowed to go to the normal schools that already existed. That's terrible, Katie. How could she be allowed to go to school so they can learn? You're right, Coco. And that's exactly what Catherine thought too. She loved everyone, no matter what colour skin they had or where they came from. And she did all she could to make sure that the people she helped received the best possible life she could give them. And giving them an education was a great way to do that. What about today, Katie? Are Indigenous and Africans allowed to go to school like everyone else now? Yes, they are, Coco. But it took brave, loving people like St. Catherine Drexel to care for them despite how badly most people treated them for such a good change to happen. All right, but St. Catherine, you must have worked very hard. Very, very hard, Coco. And she wasn't satisfied with just one area. She also encouraged other religious congregations to spread her mission to more indigenous American communities in different parts of America even giving them money to support the work they would be doing. Everyone must have loved her so much, don't you think, kids? She certainly deserved to be loved by everyone, didn't she? And I'm sure that all the people she helped must have been so thankful for all she did for them. But there would have been lots of people who didn't like how generous she was. What? Those people must have been coconuts. That's one way of putting it. There are always some people who try to stop good people like Catherine. Well, lucky they didn't succeed. God was one of Kate Bing's side, wasn't it, Katie? He certainly was, Coco. And it was because she loved God so much that she never gave up even when things were hard. 
Even when she had a heart attack when she was 77 years old and she had to retire from teaching and going out on mission work, she didn't stop helping. Instead, she spent the rest of her life in prayer, thanking God for all he had done through her and continuing to ask for his help. Then, when God finally took her to heaven when she was 96, it was obvious that he had answered her prayers. Are there still sisters like Catherine today? Indeed there are, Coco. Even now, they continue to work and pray so that St. Catherine's efforts are never undone. She definitely gave them a good example. Definitely. Let's ask her for help so that we can be good examples like her. Fuck amazing! Let's do it! Dear St. Catherine Drexel, thank you for following God's call and giving up everything so that those in need could receive all you had to offer. Help us to live as generously as you did and please pray for all those who continue your mission today. Imagine if all fires were reminded of St. Catherine Drexel every time they found treasure. Yeah, what would be for? Yeah, or imagine if every person got reminded of her every time they got given lots and lots of money. Yeah, what a wild that would be. I'm glad we don't have to use money in the bush. What a relief. <sighs> Lucky bird. Hey, Coco, you know about trees, don't you? Yeah, I'd say I'm something of an expert on trees, actually. What kind are you after? Yeah, best for nest making, for climbing, for sitting, for spying, or snacking. Oh no, I'm not after a certain kind. I just want to know if you know something that can jump higher than a tree. Right. Wow. That's an interesting question. A riddle, actually. Ah, I see. Sneaking. Well, let me think. Well, anything that can jump higher than a tree? A jumping jack. Uh, can that jump higher than a tree? I don't know, I've never tried. What about something else, huh? Can uh, you kids think of anything that can jump higher than a tree? A uh, bird, I can go higher than a tree. Yeah, but you fly, you don't jump, do you? Oh, wow, well, Miss Wow. <sighs> okay, any other ideas? Uh, nah, Katie, it's getting confusing. Trees are pretty tall, aren't they? Yeah. I don't think there's anything that can jump higher than a tree. But, but think about it, right? What can jump higher than a tree? Ah. What can what can jump? I can jump, you can jump. Okay. Okay, I can't jump higher than a tree though, or maybe I can. Can trees jump? No. Nah. <laughs> there we go, there's our answer. Trees can't jump at all, so that means anything can jump higher than a tree, right? Ah, oh, funny, very funny, Katie. I'm glad you think so. And she says I boast. She also says it's time to make some craft. A bit bossy too, I reckon. I'm not deaf, Coco. Let's go. Coming, coming. craft today, Coco? Yeah, Katie, I'm a job started. I hope you are, and I hope you guys are too. Today, we're going to be making a people chain, because remember how St. Catherine Drexel just loved helping so many people? So what you need is a pencil, some coloring textures or pencils if you like, a piece of paper, and some scissors. Let's get started. So what we need to do first is divide our paper up into equal segments. So we're gonna fold it in half first, like this. Corners meet. We're going to fold it in half again. Now we've got one piece of paper folded into four parts, like this. And now we're going to draw the shape of a person. So that's what we need our pencil for. Okay, so what do people have? They have a head. A head, that's right. So we're gonna draw a head. Oh, nice big head. And then what attaches that to their body? A neck. A neck. So we're gonna draw a neck. And then what happens after our neck? We've got two. Wings. Arms, not wings. We have arms. There we go. 
And now our arms are connected to our body. body. We're gonna draw a nice body here. And then what happens at the bottom of our body? We've got two legs for walking. So we're gonna draw one leg here all the way down to the edge. Another leg, and then that just looks like a, a big skirt, doesn't it? So what we need is some inside leg. Okay, so that's the outline of our person. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut around it. Here's where the magic happens when we fold it out. What happens? <gasps> what? I had one person and now I have four people. Okay, now we're gonna draw happy faces. We'll start with a happy smile on each of them. Yay. And now their heads look a bit bare, don't they? They need some hair. This one's gonna have brown hair. Call that one Dave. There's Dave. This one can be Anna. There we go. Anna can have curly hair. Yay. Hello. This is, um, what's this one's name, Coco? Shop. Joe. All right, this one is Joe. And last one is called, what's this one called? Amelia. This one's called Amelia. Okay, there's our faces. Now we need to put some clothes on them. There we go. Dave can wear a blue shirt. And we've got Anna here. She likes pink. green. Now what colour, who's this one? Joe. What colour shirt is Joe going to have Coco? Green. There we go. And yeah. And last of all we've got, who's this? Amelia. Yep, Amelia. She's going to have there is our people chain. Look how colourful they are and how happy they are. Woohoo! There we go. Our lovely people chain. Don't they look happy, Coco? Yeah, Katie! Hey kids, if you'd like extra instructions on how to make this awesome people chain, you can find it at swpals.org and Coco and I would love to see you guys yeah. with your people chains. Maybe you'd like to put you and your friends there or just any, any random little friends you can come up with. Have fun. Have fun kids. Hey Coco, can I hold your hand? No. What? Why not? I don't have any hands. Huh. Oh, would you look at that? Well, not look. No hands, huh? Wow. Yes. Well, can I hold your wing instead? Sure. Thanks. Now what do we do? Now we're friends. Yay! Yay! You should have added a bat onto that paper chain, Katie. Oh, you're right. Maybe the kids can add you onto theirs. What do you think, kids? I think they said yes. I am so, Katie. Can you let go of my wing now? We have to say goodbye. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Coco. See you next time, friends. See you next time, friends. With St. Catherine Drexel, we can all excel. Come and play, play with Katie and Coco. That's the way, get ready, let's go. Flying through the air with Coco. Telling stories with Katie. You and I together, meeting my friends. Friends that help us every day. Katie and Coco, that help us every day. And now we do our thing,
Are you searching for fulfillment? <laughs> Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World.